Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Lodi. Let's talk about vitamin C, intravenous vitamin C in cancer, because um, it is probably one of the most famous alternative integrative therapies known. Uh, in fact, the good news is that because it has finally been picked up and realized by the conventional world, uh, it's actually coming out of the alternative closet. Some insurance companies are actually paying for vitamin C in cancer. Uh, there's been clinical trials. The NIH, the um, uh, FDA, and the NCI, National Cancer Institute, have all uh, co tri sponsored studies, published them, then clinical trials arose out of that, and everything. So they have the mechanism of action, et cetera. Well, let's talk about what high dose vitamin C does. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it was 1974 that Cameron and Pauling, Dr. Linus Pauling, you know him, he's the the one who made us all aware in the world of the value of vitamin C. Um, uh, they published some studies where they were giving 10 grams intravenously uh, to patients, to a whole, a whole lot of cancer patients, terminally ill cancer patients. Um, and they had significantly longer lives and better, better quality of life, et cetera. The Mayo Clinic about 10 years later said, uh, well, we're going to debunk this. So they, they, they did it. They debunked it. They gave them, just like Pauling and Cameron gave them 10 grams of vitamin C, not ideal, orally, and then said, yeah, this is junk, it doesn't work. Okay, so they disproved it, and then the conventional world stopped thinking, and they thought for years, vitamin C and cancer just doesn't work. Well, what we learned later was that the gut prevents absorption beyond a certain point. In fact, you can't get up to the millimolar concentration around the cell necessary to kill it orally. You just cannot. Because anyone who's taken a lot of vitamin C knows, it would hap knows what happens. You get diarrhea. You can only take a certain amount, and then it just doesn't get absorbed anymore. So it doesn't happen. So, so basically, um, uh, vitamin C, when given intravenously, you can get up to the 100 millimolar, 200 millimolar, 400 millimolar concentrations around the cell, which is more than enough to kill the cancer cells, okay? The beautiful thing about vitamin C is that it's, it is specifically killing the cancer cell. For the healthy cell, it's actually making it stronger. It's giving it, because the, the, the cancer cell is able to, I mean, the healthy cell is a, has the, the, the right enzymes to convert these metabolic products into water and oxygen, which are good for them. Every cell needs more water and oxygen, so that's that. I'll go into the details in a minute, but I just wanted to let you know, that's the pro-oxidant effect. Now, there are other, uh, ways in which vitamin C uh, eliminates cancer. Um, let's, but let's first talk about the prooxidant effect. The prooxidant effect, which was which was uh, elucidated and published in these studies, as I said, by the uh, Mark Levine with the uh, NIH, National Institute of Health, Maryland, Bethesda, Maryland, the FDA, uh, and the NCI. They did a series of studies. They did in vitro studies, then they did in vivo studies, and they found out that the mechanism of action is that when vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is uh, uh, runs into an iron or copper uh, 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 atom, it converts it from one valence to another, so three plus to two plus. It's called a Fenton reaction. It's a well-known reaction that occurs in biochemistry. It's how our adrenal glands make adrenaline. It's 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 used. It's how what's what our white blood cells do when they when they find a virus or a bacteria. They they do this, okay, because they oxidize it. So this is an oxidizing. It's a pro-oxidant effect, okay. So by the way, let's just take a sidetrack for a second. When 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 oncologists tell you you can't take vitamin C while you're getting chemo because it's going to undo the effects, it's going to protect you. Wrong. They, again, they're not reading. The literature, they're only reading what they're told to read. They're really good little, they really did a good job, you know. Um, they didn't go to, um, uh, they didn't play games and stuff on the side. They went to school, they studied, they did everything really right, and they, at the end, they learned how to follow the rules. And that's what they do. They're algorithmic, uh, they, they exist in algorithms. They think in algorithms. If you go from one to one of these guys, I'm sorry, I have to say this. If you go from one oncologist in the great center to another oncologist in the great center, you're going to get two first opinions. You're going to get this opinion on this guy who says, do this first, then that. And the other guy says, no, 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 do this first, and this, that. They're still chemo, radiation, surgery, or now targeted therapies, what they're calling immunotherapy. It's not immune therapy. It's destroying the immune system. Anyway, so 
They're going to tell you, don't use vitamin C because it's going to undo the effects. That's not wrong because they're not, they don't realize what we're talking about. How does chemo kill? By causing oxidation. It's oxidation and causes apoptosis and kills it. What is high dose vitamin C? Oxidation, apoptosis. So in fact, it turns out with the studies we're seeing now, there was a study recently done, uh, several studies recently done with gemcitabine and vitamin C, and you have a much higher effect with gemcitabine, one of their favorite drugs, one of the favorite chemos works better. And it turns out that they all, most of them do, not all of them, but most of them actually work better or potentiated. Why? Because vitamin C in those high doses is a pro-oxidant, not an antioxidant. It's engaging in antioxidant activities at a biochemical level by donating an electron to a ferric iron and turning it into a ferrous iron. The byproduct is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a normal standard, happens every nanosecond in healthy cells, and healthy cells therefore have the enzyme called catalase, which easily converts it into water and oxygen. Cancer cells have downregulated that. They don't need it because they don't use oxygen anymore. So it kills them. Perfect chemo. Kills the bad guy. Good for the good guy. Okay? So that's how it works. That's how uh, high-dose vitamin C and its pro-oxidant pro uh, method kills cancer. So you've got to do, what do you have to do? You have to make sure, we now know you have to get in the extracellular fluid, you have to get a plasma level of 350 to 400 milligrams per deciliter of ascorbate. Ascorbate is just the salt form of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. You have to get that much ascorbate, in, and then therefore you have overcome the amount of catalase that's normally in the, in the blood to convert it. You've overcome that, and now the cancer cell is stuck with not being able to convert it. Healthy cells are, remember, they're, they're benefiting by it. Okay? So, uh, so we have to get those. So how do we get those? And that's really the research now needs to focus on how much do you give, when, what is the proper sequence, what is the proper do dosage, exactly what we, we are doing now at, at, at Oasis and our, some of our other centers, as you may or may not know, Oasis, we now have Oasis International. We're opening up centers around the world because not everybody lives close to America. You know, Canada, Europe is okay. You can get to America, but if you're living in Cambodia, Singapore, it's not always that easy, uh, or Saudi Arabia, etc. So anyway, we have Oasis International. What we're doing in all these centers is trying to figure out what is the best dosage and frequency. What are we doing with vitamin C? Okay, we know it works, but how do we make it work best? Um, and so we're looking at different dosing schedules, etc. And we're looking at the basic pharmacokinetics of, of any drug. You know, they know when they give a drug that you need to give a certain amount to get a certain level in the blood, in the plasma. Okay? So it's what they call a loading dose, and then you need to give a maintenance dose. You know, and anyway, so how do you best do that? Anyway, we're working on all that stuff. We're, we kind of, uh, you know, we, we're trying to refine and understand how, what's the best way to give this. Um, okay. Now, that's one of the mechanisms, the pro-oxid. It's been well proven. Now what's being coming out in the literature, which is absolutely amazing, is the, uh, uh, the way in which, uh, the other ways in which vitamin C is able to uh, eliminate cancer. One is that, can now since um, uh, cancer cells um, have a receptor called the GLUT1 receptor, pick up, pick up glucose, when the, when the glucose becomes DHA, which is dihydroascorbate, it gets changed, the cancer cells pick that up readily. Well, once it gets in, the cancer cell has to now reduce it, antioxidize it. And what it does, it uses up all of its glutathione, all of its NADH, uh, NAD. It uses up all of these necessary antioxidant enzymes that needed to protect it by doing that. So now it doesn't have any left. It's vulnerable. You've just weakened it. So if you give it that vitamin C first, and that doesn't have to be the high levels of the prooxidant. You just need to get enough in there so it's <laughs> sucking it up and then using up all of its enzymes, it becomes weak. You've weakened it. Okay, so we do that all the time. So that, to, therapeutically, you can keep in mind what do you have to do that, in that regard. You need to take it orally and some, whatever else. We, we're really working with all this. Uh, the other thing it does is it downregulates the HIF1 factor, mm -hmm. hypoxia-inducible factor. This is incredibly important because what happens is if you get a cut on your, on your arm. You got a cut. Uh, the, you're bleeding. Now, what's happening? That blood is leaving your body. It's no longer available for those cells, so those cells aren't getting the oxygen from the blood. It's called hypoxia, low oxygen. Once that happens, it signals a 
molecule to be produced, the chemical to be produced in the body, called HIF1. There's a whole theory about them, but hypoxia-inducible factors. What do those do? They stimulate new blood vessel growth. They stimulate uh, tissue proliferation. All the things that they stimulate are to help that wound heal uh, and all that. Well, in the middle of cancer cells, cancer cells don't have the same kind of blood vessels, so they have all these areas, zones of hypoxia. That's stimulating new blood vessel growth, so it stimulates uh, the, uh, the cancer to grow. So these HIF1 factors, which are necessary for wound healing, when it happens in a cancer cell, it stimulates cancer growth. We know that. If you can block, if you can stop the blood vessels from being able to grow, you've conquered, you've conquered cancer. It can't grow more than a half a millimeter. Half five millimeter, whatever it is, I can't remember the small. It's a small amount of, uh, 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 it cannot grow beyond that without getting more of a blood supply. Without getting that blood supply, uh, it can't grow sure. beyond that. So the tumor would be there, but it would be small, but eventually die because it's, it's not a viable, it's not sustainable. Um, so the, so it, what it does is it actually turns on enzyme systems that turn off the HIF1. That's what vitamin C does. Okay, and then the fourth one is a whole topic, which I'll do in another discussion, but it's epigenetic changes. It actually modifies the epigenetics to turn off the whole cancer process. So vitamin C is not just killing cancer. It's making it impossible for cancer to live, making it impossible for cancer to grow and to continue. That's why it's so important, not only as a, as a fundamental treatment, but as a prevention, as a prophylaxis. Okay, And also, once you got rid of the cancer, to keep it gone. So if there's one thing we have everyone do after they leave is find someone in their neighborhood who can give them intravenous vitamin C on a regular basis. How long? As long as you can. As long as you can. I have one lady who is still getting it. She comes in monthly. It's been 10 years now. You know, so, you know, at the beginning it's not that. You might do it when you leave. You might do it twice a week for a year, six months, uh, so a year, 18 months, whatever. Then you might go down to once a week, right? And, you know like that, but you keep doing that, and you're taking it orally and everything, because remember, this is going to, uh, as we said, it operates on multiple levels. It's phenomenal. If you only had one thing, that's what it is. That's what it should be. Regarding the dosages and uh, the timing and all that, we're having breakthroughs all the time on how to best administer vitamin C. For example, we give loading doses, then we give maintenance doses. We, we, uh, we try to keep it, uh, people taking it for long, longer periods of time. We also make sure there's, they're getting enough on a daily basis. There's all these ways that you've got to measure levels, plasma levels, um, et cetera. So anyway, we are researching this at all of our centers around the world. You know, we have Oasis and Oasis of Healing in Arizona. Um, that is our mothership. And now we've got these satellites growing up all around Southeast Asia, Oasis International. And in all these places, we're all doing the same therapies. And what we're trying to do is um, um, uh, duplicate the Oasis because uh, it's fantastic. We're having, we've, been, we've been around a long time. Everyone knows about us. But what we're doing is duplicating this around Southeast Asia and then later around the rest of the world. Uh, but in all of these places, we are researching different ways of utilizing vitamin C to get the best out of it. And uh, we have weekly, if not daily, breakthroughs on how best to do that. I think by now, we kind of get the answer. I think we've got the answer now. So the protocols and methodologies that we have been refining over the years at Oasis uh, and now around the world um, have helped thousands of people be restored to health. Okay. So with regards to vitamin C, if you only had to have one single treatment therapy, it, it would have to be that uh, because of, I've already told you all the things that it does. Okay, and it doesn't mean you don't have to get it from us, get it from anybody. Just make sure that they actually studied it, were trained, and they know how to give it. You can't just put vitamin C in a bag of water and give it in your vein. You know, you got to make sure there's some calcium in there and other things. You know, you can't just do that. You've got to, and you can't, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So make sure, because people think they, well, I went and I got alternative therapy, it didn't work. Well, you, you don't know. You don't know. So you got to make sure they're trained and all that. But again, let me just say, that vitamin C is magic, um, uh, but what we have done is actually refined 
the methods and the protocols on how to give it in the most effective way. Uh, and it's, it's incredible. I think we're, uh, as, I, as I said before, you know, I think we're close to being perfect. <laughs>